Well, hello everybody, this is uh, Chris at The Ancient Scholar. This is a uh, supplemental video that I'm going to make real quick. Uh, it'll be supplemental to uh, the general uh, ventilator management uh, video that I did off of the uh, keynote presentation. I made that into a video. I've received several questions uh, about the concept of uh, improving oxygenation. And some people are asking me, uh, which one do you increase first, the FiO2 or the PEEP? And I think I was a little ambiguous in the video, and, and what I had said is that PEEP is your primary intervention. We, we generally try to increase that first, and um, we, it, if at all possible, try to keep the FiO2 under uh, 60% or under. Uh, now, though that's still true, and uh, what I would say um, in response to that, as far as when you look at some of the, the examinations, the boards specifically, is that you are safe to initially to initially increase the FiO2 up to 60%. Uh, once you get to 60% on your FiO2, you at that point need to transition to PEEP and you need to be use PEEP as your primary method of increasing oxygenation. Of course, um, we, we have to get to optimal PEEP, and if I have hemodynamic changes, I have to back off on the PEEP and then maybe consider increasing the FiO2 above 60%. But um, you can initially increase the FiO2 up to 60% and then transition to PEEP. Um, but again, um, you should you still try to use PEEP as your primary intervention um, just so you avoid having um, high FiO2s. And, of course, 60% is kind of the, the arbitrary limit that they, that they make. And, of course, this is going to be a little different in the clinical setting uh, where we'll be thinking outside of the box, and uh, it's going to be much more dynamic. So we need to make uh, the differentiation between what I may be asked on a board exam and what I may end up doing on um, in, in, in the real-world application. So hopefully that clears up any questions. Okay, thanks, guys. Take care.